So we did make a video surrounding this topic a few days ago, talking about the Vancouver Canucks and the updates as to how they may be getting close to some sort of a Tyler Myers deal. Who really knows? Elliot Friedman had the scoop, and from his perspective, it seemed like the Canucks would maybe try to get something done. And honestly, if you watch that video, my sentiments haven't really changed. I like Tyler Myers a lot now. Something that I don't know if I could have been able to say with a straight face one year ago. I think at this point last year it was all like, oh yeah, they've got one year left, one year left. Just gotta do one more year of Tyler Myers and then that contract is off the book. Six million dollars. Sayonara, buddy. But... The fact that he was really good in the playoffs, and he was very solid throughout the regular season, is intriguing. Because now, Myers is in a position where I think the majority of fans actually do want him to come back. Just based off of what I'm seeing in my comments section, what I'm seeing all over social media, a good chunk of the fan base wants him back, if not everybody, to be honest. Like, I haven't seen much of anybody saying they would not want to see Tyler Myers back. But on that regard, we did have ourselves another update as to the Canucks and the potential of re-signing him. Rick Dollywell said this on yesterday's edition of Donnie and Dolly. He believes Tyler Meyer's deal, when it's done, looks like a two to three year range tad under three million dollars AAV contract. And honestly, look, I said this all in the video a few days ago. If the Canucks sign Myers to something like 2.9 mil, let's just say... That's really, really good. Really, really good. My goodness, this guy was playing like a $5 million defenseman in the playoffs. Just the defensive structure, the safety, the breakouts were not terrible. He was physical. He was clogging guys up, making sure the opponents couldn't do their thing. And he penalty killed like crazy. Tyler Myers was such a stud in this year's playoff run, and he kind of earned back all of the reputation that he had lost over the years in Vancouver because of his pylon-like nature and his poor play at times. Myers has been awesome, and with a $2.9 million price tag, it kind of aligns right with the idea we were talking about saying, dude, this guy is already in his mid-30s. He's 34 years old. He had just come off of a five-year deal making $6 million per season. There's no reason for Tyler Myers to be requesting the bag anymore. He already got it. So why not take some sort of a hometown discount? He stays in Kelowna during the off seasons. He is here. He has earned back the fandom and there is no reason for him to go out there and sign for an extended amount of money that is huge. So why not just come back? Baby, come back and do it on a cheap cap hit just to make everybody happy. And that is exactly what Dollywall is reporting. Under 3 million AAV, that is awesome. But of course, the big question is whether or not a two to three year deal is actually appropriate here. Myers at 34 will be 37 by the time this contract ends. So this is what some of the responses go out there and say. Jay Fresh tweeted this out in response to the Tyler Myers news. I know he had a pretty decent year followed by a poor playoffs. Really? Poor? I don't agree, Jay Fresh. Come on. But a three year deal of that money for Myers that will expire when he is 37 years old. I will add nuance either way. He had a decent regular season undermined by a league-worst penalty impact followed by a round where he got run over versus Nashville and a round where he was mixed but picked it up later on versus Edmonton. There are some replies that are debating that fact. You had Ali saying, yeah, I don't think the expected graphs tell the story here for Myers playoffs. He was pretty gaff-free and generally played pretty well against tough competition. But then Jay Fresh replies saying, yeah, he's definitely improved on the gaffs, but there's obviously more to defense than not making bad mistakes. I think you're probably right regarding the Edmonton series, though. And I get where Jay Fresh is coming from, you know, he's always been an analytics guy, looking at numbers, looking at charts, and looking at what the data says, so obviously he has his biases, but at the same time, I mean, there is a big hill that he's willing to die on, it seems like. Here's another follow-up tweet. Imagine telling someone back in September that the Canucks probably shouldn't extend Myers till he's 37 will be a deeply unpopular opinion. And again, the numbers back that up. Tyler Myers had a projected 13% wins above replacement number via the latest post on the Arcanox subreddit, and a negative rating on offense and defense and penalty killing and penalties and everything else. So, yeah, it's not great, but for some reason, this is one of those situations where I feel like the guy severely outplayed a lot of the fancy stats. 
based off of the eye test of many Canucks fans. And I will say that even though he did have those terrible first four years of the contract, all it takes is one good playoff run and one year to show us what he's really capable of in order for Canucks fans to be into it again. And I get it, you could say that's recency bias. Yo, Canucks fans are so biased about what happened like two months ago, ignoring what happened for the past four years before that. And while there might not be too much rationality behind that, come on, man, like the Canucks have been so bad for so many years. Give Canucks fans the chance to be grateful for something that it is that they want, especially when it's right there, when it's really easily attainable. This postman in the Arcanux sub goes out there and asks if Tyler Myers is the right choice because of these factors. He had four bad seasons before Rick Tockett. He's been bad. $3 million might seem cheap on the surface, but we're essentially preventing ourselves from making an upgrade in this year's UFA class, which is filled with much younger, better second pair guys. I can't help but feel this would be a similar mistake to the one we were all laughing at Holland for a few summers ago in signing CC. The top reply says that Myers at a discount is 100% the right choice. That's why all three coaches, i.e. people that actually know the game, play him so much. He's versatile and great in his proper role. A guy that can be your number four for less than three million per is 100% the right choice. And Devil's Advocate POV says Myers as your top shutdown guy probably isn't an asset, and that's what the chart is telling us. We played him big minutes against the top lines during the season and hard matched him against Forsberg and then used him the most against McDavid and Dreisaitl, and the advanced stats tell you we got our chance in those minutes essentially. At the end of the day, if you found a big younger shutdown guy that looked better in those minutes, he would be out of our budget. And so, at the end of the day, even if Myers is brought back to the Vancouver Canucks to be some sort of a similarly rolled guy like Ian Cole, for example, not necessarily a number three or a number four, but somebody who could bleed into number four like minutes and mostly share the load equally with the bottom pairing guys. He wouldn't be a Quinn Hughes line mate. He wouldn't be on that top unit. But if he's able to bring that stability and just showcase that he can play competent hockey and not make as many mistakes as he had in the past. Honestly, because of how we had seen him play in the playoffs, I like it. And that is just my opinion that is not influenced by fancy statistics that say that he got outmatched and that the Forsberg McDavid lines were able to do really good things against the Canucks and this and that and Myers was getting burned because there are numbers and charts to back that idea up. But I don't know, man. Based off the comment section, y'all seem to want him to come back too. Especially if it's at a dollar amount like this. Like, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about that overall process? What are your thoughts about the commentary on his play, his four years being bad and his one season being all right, his playoffs being good or analytically being bad. What are your opinions on that? What do you think the contract should be if you wanted to base the negotiations off of this previous season? And what are your thoughts about the idea of signing him for three years until he's 37 years old? I don't really think it's that bad. Really? I don't know, man. There have been other guys that have aged into their late 30s as okay defensemen too, so I don't think it'd be the worst experiment in the world. I think two years would probably be more ideal, but three, if they're able to get him at that dollar amount with that lowered salary, I honestly don't budge much. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit recency biased like the rest of the Canucks fan base apparently because some of us want to see Tyler Myers back, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Myers and this contract signing to be. Of course, it hasn't happened yet. We're just waiting, but for now, thoughts in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.